Hi, it's Kevin LaBates here, and today I thought I would talk a bit about bug bounties in the DeFi world, because we're seeing a shift in the way that these bounties work. In the good old days, a protocol organization would offer bounties, uh, depending on the severity of the bug, and there would be prices attached to them. So white hat hackers would go out, find flaws, and get a financial reward. Uh, now we're seeing hackers walk off with hundreds of millions of dollars in some cases and then the negotiation tactic is to beg them to give the money back and offer them a really significant reward in return. So whereas before finding a bug might net you 10 or 20 or even $30,000, now if you can walk off with $100 million, you can hold out for say $1 million. And of course this makes economic sense from the organization's point of view because getting $99 million back of your $100 million is better than losing the whole lot and there is a real risk of that. And a uh, hacker could even just ditch the capital completely, send it to the null address or to an address that they don't have the key to. So. Um, I think this is a real problem for the industry and one of the things it highlights is the fact that bug bounties actually aren't that generous. When you think about the level of technical skill that is required in order to find these kinds of flaws and you look at the sums that are involved if the flaws aren't fixed and then you look at the traditional bug bounty levels, um, they don't really match up. So we've had uh, the Poly Network hack, which I think 600 million was stolen in. And then we had Cream Finance a little while back. And I think that was something in the region of 100 or 120 million. And now we've had a third uh, exchange hack, although it could just be a leaked key, which doesn't really sound like a hack to me. But in any case, it's another 120 million. And it's quite possible that in each case, the people responsible are going to end up becoming millionaires because of it. And if the DeFi organizations continue to effectively operate in this manner and not offer huge rewards for white hat hackers who are genuinely following the code of disclosing the vulnerability to the organization rather than exploiting it, if the DeFi organizations instead are paying out masses of money for uh, hacker to hackers who have actually absconded with the funds in a last ditch attempt to get them back that's going to shift the way that this whole industry works uh, genuine white hat hackers are going to wonder to themselves well, why am i being ethical and honest when the lucrative approach is to effectively be a black hat hacker who then flips to becoming a white hat on the offer of what is effectively a bribe anyway uh, i think it's a bad sign for the industry i also think it illustrates the fact that the um, payouts have not been commensurate with the severity of the uh, bugs that white hat hackers find. Um, hopefully we can shift back to a more honest and ethical approach in this industry, but to be honest, I'm not holding out much hope. Uh, that's today's episode on hacking and DeFi. I hope you found it interesting and I'll see you in the next episode soon. Bye for now.